What's going on everybody? My name is Hayden and if you found this video, I'm sure you're just as confused as I was when I first got my four link done and I was trying to figure out where to put the bars and actually what the intersection point was, how, how high off the ground it was. In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate your instant center and uh, also show you how to basically dumb it down and make you a free calculator so you don't have to buy a four link calculator because it really is as simple as finding points. Now, don't be afraid. You don't have to be good at math to do this. I'm going to walk you guys through step by step. And basically, we're going to use online calculators to find all the equations of the lines that you need. And the hardest thing you're going to have to do is measure stuff. So if you can use a tape measure and then plug in points and just follow along with this video, you'll be perfectly fine. Before we get too far ahead of ourselves here, I have a whole bunch of stuff linked down below in the description. Go click on the four link article I have down below and read all that. Basically, it's going to tell you what the anti squat line is. And we're also going to be calculating that later. Now, just a disclaimer, this is going to be a rough estimate of where your instant center is going to be and where your anti squat line is. Now, we're just going to use a generic anti squat line for this. But before we do that, I just want to describe the four link setup to everybody and show you guys why you need to actually calculate your points because you can't really, unless you're really good at imagining stuff and figuring out where these two bars would meet at some point in your car, you're gonna need to calculate it. There's just, it's just too hard to guess. You're gonna have to calculate your bars and figure it out. And then once you get them calculated, you can move them and adjust them depending on what the car does. Because every car is gonna react different depending on what you actually have it at. So you could put them at the same settings mine's at and your car could do way different things just because of the weight of the car and everything like that. So. Go read that article, give you guys some time right now to go read it before we get started because you're gonna need to know some stuff before you can calculate this. It's gonna be kind of hard to see this, but I wanted to show you guys this. So basically what we're trying to calculate is do you see these, your upper and your lower bar up front, right? It comes to some, at some point, these two bars should intersect. Well, I know mine do. If they don't intersect, that's probably bad. I don't know what happens if that happens. But these two points right here will intersect at some point down the car. So this is what we're calculating right here is how high this point is off the ground and how far out it is. And to break it down for you guys before we get started, basically what I'm going to be doing is turning these bolt hole points into points on an X and Y axis. And then we're able to use a graphing calculator to actually graph out the line and then also use your anti-squat line to see where they intersect and see where it falls on the anti-squat line. So my car is a small tire car. I have about 120 to 130% anti-squat in my car. So that means if you guys read that article, you know that means on the launch, I'm trying to get the axle to be shoved into the ground and separate from the chassis of the car. I'm not trying to get it to squat hard in the rear and actually do the opposite and squat. My car set up with anti-squat. Most small tire cars and those radial cars all that you see have anti-squat in them. Now every car is different like I said so it's all going to be different but let's get started. First things first to get started with calculating these points. You need to have your car on the ground at right height because if you have it jacked up or unloaded at all it's going to affect your numbers and change your y-axis numbers. So looking at the side of the car we're going to basically graph the points on the car and it's going to be very simple once I show you guys. To start off, we're gonna calculate the bottom bar. And now my car is jacked up, so don't use, don't have your car jacked up. But for ease of showing you guys this, I'm gonna leave my car jacked up. I already have numbers from when it was on the ground at right height. Now you could be picky about it and like put a driver in there and everything like that. But I'm just trying to get it a rough estimate because at the track, once it launches, I can see what it's doing. And if it needs more anti-squat, I can go up a hole or whatever and you can calculate that later. We're, we're gonna find the points for our lower bar. That's the first thing we're gonna calculate. I like to use the bottom bar and the very rear bolt hole for my zero point. So to find our X and Y points for our bottom bar, we're gonna use this as zero. So this is our X point is gonna be zero. X axis is the length of the car, so this way. And then to find our other X point for this one, all you're gonna do is measure from the center of this bolt head to the center of this bolt head over here and add that to zero and that's going to be your other x coordinate to find your y coordinate all you're going to do is measure from this the center of this bolt hole to the ground and then you're going to do that that's going to be your y point for this point right here 
You're gonna do the same thing for this side, just measure from this bolt hole to the ground. I would recommend you guys making something like this too. So as you can see, this is the axle, this is the ground. This is our X axis. We're just looking at the car from a side view. This point right here, this is our rear bolt hole on our lower bar. Like I said, for the X axis, we're using zero because that's this way. And then my measurement from the center line of the bolt to the ground was 5.5 inches. So that's my Y coordinate, because that's my up and down coordinate. And then my bar, my bottom bar was 14 inches long. So that's my next X coordinate right here. So that's, again, this way is the X axis. My front bolt on my lower bar was 7.25 inches off the ground. It's easy for me to measure my top bolts because my car is jacked up. If yours is on the ground, it's going to be a little bit harder. So what I recommend is this. Jack it up and then just measure the rear spread. So you can measure from the center line of this bolt to the center line of that bolt and then do the same for the front, the center line of this bolt to the center line of the bolt up there. And then write those numbers down once you figure out your rear spread and your front spread between those two bolts, then all you have to do is, so we're finding the height, right? So we're on this axis, so that is our Y axis. All you have to do is add that spread to your bottom bolt hole, because we already know we're just measuring from the ground. So if you can measure from this bolt to the ground, it'd be the same distance. So basically my spread was 9.5 for the rear bolt, so I just added 9.5 to 5.5, and that gave me 15 inches, and then this Y coordinate is, the spread was seven inches on the front, and so I just added seven inches to 7.25, and I got 14.25, and then now you're wondering, how do we get this X coordinate? This one is still zero because we didn't move anywhere on this axis. These bolts, these bolt holes are right in line with each other. For this X point, all you have to do is measure the top bar and then just add that, that measurement to zero. My top bar happens to be 13, 0.5 inches so very simple just measure the bar and then now so as you can see we just turned in those bolt holes into points right now that we have these points for our bottom and our top bar we can move on to figuring out our anti-squat line on to calculating the anti-squat line for your car so there's a couple of way, different ways of doing this the easiest way for me to show this this is very crude is so this is your rear tire this is your front tire this is your rear contact patch right here, imaginary, obviously. And then this is to the front of your top tire. This is what they call the anti-squat line. If you looked at that page, and this should look very familiar to you. Now you might be wondering, how are we gonna turn these into points? Well, I'm gonna show you very easily. This one's very easy. This one's a little bit more complicated, but it's still very easy. I use this point as zero, zero for a reason. On my brackets, this point is actually right in line with the center of the axle. So for my point, it's really easy. I can use zero, zero. If your point isn't like this and your four link brackets aren't like this, it's actually very easy. All you can do is if you really wanna get complicated about it, you could hang a plumb bob from here and then measure the distance and just subtract that from zero. So say your bolt hole is two inches in front of the center of your axle all you have to do is subtract two from zero which gives you negative two and that is your x coordinate for this point for this example i'm still going to be calculating mine with you guys if yours is different like i said just subtract it subtract the difference to this so if your bracket isn't like mine just subtract it so you're actually scooting it this way it ends up working out the same it's just easier to use that point as zero zero and then as far as your Y coordinate goes, this is actually really easy too because you're actually at the ground. So using the ground makes it really easy. So as you can see, this isn't actually zero, zero right here. This is 5.5 inches off the ground, which we know your tire is actually on the ground. So this point is really easy. It's just zero, zero. For mine at least, yours would poss could possibly be a negative number on the X axis and then zero here. Now to find this next one right here, you can do this two different ways. If you don't want to find the center line of your camshaft and it's too hard for you, you can just use the top of your tire. So if you were to do that, you basically add your wheelbase to this x-axis number right here. I know my wheelbase is 96 inches. So mine x num my x coordinate right here is gonna be 96 inches. Now I need to find out how high off the ground either the top of your tire is, if that's where you want to go, or to the center line of your crankshaft in line with your front hub right here where your wheelbase would be. How I found out how high the center line of my camshaft is, I went online and I looked online to see if anybody had from the center line of the crank to the center line of the cam camshaft. And 
they have that spec online for the LS motors. And that makes it easy because I can't actually see the camshaft because the front timing cover's in the way, but I can see the front crank bolt. So I just measured from the ground to the front crank bolt and then added that measurement from the center line of the crank to the center line of the cam. And that gives me from the ground to the center line of my camshaft. My measurement for the center, from the ground to the center line of the camshaft is 16.5 inches. So now this is all we need right here. We have two points for this line right here that we can extend out and is at some point gonna intersect with this line here. So with these two points, we can figure out this entire line. And with these points, we can figure out this anti-squat line. Now, if you guys remember from algebra, we can find an equation of a line if we have two points that's on that line. So that means I'm gonna save you guys the headache because I'm sure some of you guys don't wanna actually <laughs> plug it into the formula. But down below, I put a link to a equation of a line calculator. All you need is a two points. You just gotta plug the two points in. I'm gonna get on my laptop and show you guys what we're gonna be working with just because it's gonna be easier to show you guys. We're gonna go online, find the equations of our lines. Once we get the equation of our line, we can put it into an online graphing calculator, and then it's actually going to show you where they intersect, and it can calculate out where the intersection point is, and it'll show you where that point lands on the anti-squat line, if it's above the anti-squat line or below the anti-squat line. And then after that, I'm gonna show you guys how to calculate how much anti-squat you actually have. Now that you have this pulled up, all you need to do is we're gonna calculate the equation for the line of the bottom bar. So that means we're gonna go ahead and put our zero, zero comma 5.5 .5 point in for our first set of points. And then our second set of points will just be the other number you got for your front hole. Now that you have all of those points entered, all you need to do is put it in the general form and then hit calculate. And then this will show you, you don't need to pay attention to any of this stuff. This is all we're looking for right here is this y is equal to 1 8th of an x plus 11 over 2. Now that we have that equation, I'm just going to write that down right here. So it's y is equal to 1 8th of an x plus 11 over 2. So that is the equation of our line for the bottom bar. Now we just need to calculate the top, same thing, plug these points in and then write down the equation of your line for that. Same thing with figuring out your anti-squat line. Plug in your points into the calculator and then write down the equation of this line. Just don't get them confused. Write it down. You're gonna need some paper or a whiteboard for this. I wouldn't recommend doing it any other way. Now that you've got all of the equation of the lines calculated, this calculator gives them to you in fraction form. This is gonna be harder to write in the uh, online graphing calculator. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just rewrite these and just approximate the decimal so obviously this one will be easy but like some of these just approximate them get them close go like go three decimal points out i mean it, it's not going to affect it too much like i said this is going to be a rough estimate so go ahead and uh, just divide these out and get them into a decimal form once you get all of those fractions turned into decimals then go into the description of my video and click on the online graphing calculator link so to get started, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna put, we're gonna be doing three expressions or three equations. So it should only end up with one, or I guess it looks like they just automatically do it. So it doesn't matter what order you really put these in. I just gonna do it in the order I did them. So I'm gonna do my bottom bar first, and then uh, I'll get all these entered in there, and then I'll show you how to play with the ranges on everything to just make sure your scale's right, and then we'll show you the intersection points and all that stuff. Don't be an idiot like me and forget to put y is equal to. <laughs> now that you have all three equations in here, you can go ahead and hide this. So these, these things over here on the side are just showing you what equation is what color. So this is my bottom bar is blue, my top bar is red, my anti-squat line is green. So we can go ahead and hide these. I'm gonna, gonna have to go ahead and zoom out. Okay, so now as you guys can see, we have some lines here and we have some intersection points right here. 
So this is actually uh, pretty cool because now we're basically on the home stretch here. As you can see, this red bar, this red line right here is my top bar. Like I said, this blue one is my bottom bar. You can see they intersect right here. As you can see, you can just click right here and it'll automatically go to the intersection point. So now what does this mean? These are numbers, right? Yes, these are numbers in inches. So my intersection point on my car is roughly, remember this is a rough estimate, is 52.7 inches long and 12.097 inches high off the ground. So that's a very long intersection point and it's really high off the ground. As you can see, we are above our anti-squat line. Our green line is our anti-squat line. Now, to calculate our anti-squat line, you can go right here, and so you can see our x-coordinate. So at 52.7, my anti-squat line is nine inches high. So I'm gonna write that down. There's not really much else to show here. Like I said, this basically gives us a very good idea of where your points are gonna be and where it falls on the anti-squat line and how long it's gonna be. So to figure out your anti-squat percentage, you need to figure out how high your anti-squat your anti-squat point is at 52.78 on the x-axis, and mine was 9.06 high. So now, to figure out the anti-squat percentage, I'm just gonna divide I'm gonna divide how high my actual intersection point is, where those two lines meet, by where it would fall on my anti-squat line, and that will give me my percentage of anti-squat. Like I told you guys in the beginning of the video, I know mine is roughly 120 to 130%, so this actually comes out to be 1.33. Now, obviously with percents you know, you gotta move the decimal over, so it's actually 133% anti-squat. That's how my setup is right now, and I like where it's at. Now this intersection point and that high off the ground works really well for my car. I really like it. When I originally put the car together, I had a very short intersection point. I think it was like 28 inches long and it was not very high off the ground. So it caused the rear axle to react super fast. So it's either gonna have anti-squat or squat. The shorter the intersection point is, the faster it's going to do wherever it lands on the anti-squat line. So if you have anti-squat, and you have like a 20 inch instant center, it's going to have a lot of anti-squat right away. I like the longer intersection point just because it doesn't hit it really hard and then unload and bounce. My car was reacting super fast right away and it was giving it a whole bunch of bite and then the car would unload in the rear and bounce all hard. So I like mine being long. I would recommend not having it shorter than like 38 inches or 40 inches, honestly. So. I hope that helps you guys. If your intersection point isn't where you want it to be, it's easy to change that. With actual four link brackets, it's really easy because every single bar adjustment, if you move the bar on the housing or on the actual cross member on the car, it's an inch up or down. So now that you have your original points made, all you need to do is adjust your Y points up or down one inch. So if you wanted to end up going up with your top bar right here, just on the cross member side to get your point up, all you have to do is add an inch to this 14 and that'll give you 15.25. You can leave the X axis the exact same. So, and then same if you wanted to move this one up or down, you just add an inch or down an inch. So you can basically, why those brackets are really nice is before you even go to the track, you could calculate out a couple different bar changes and see where it's at. For example, my car, when I first set it up, I didn't calculate it out and my intersection point was super short. I ended up doing a bar change and when I calculated it out, it's supposed to be very close to the anti-squat line, right on the anti-squat line. But when we went and did some testing, it actually had squat. So, like I said, these are all rough estimates. My car, I finally got it to the point to where I liked it and that was when we broke the rear axle housing. So I did another bar change after that to get it to actually have some anti-squat instead of squat. And when I did that is when we broke that bracket off of the axle. So was able to get it to hit the tire way harder. Now you gotta set the car up a little bit different when it does that, but I'm not gonna explain that. It's, it's just really trial and error. Like I said, every car is gonna end up being different, but with my car with anti-squat like that in that third bar change, I was able to do a 12860 and I was doing low one threes on a test and tune prep at Bandemir. Before on the second bar change, it was only doing like high one fours. So it definitely does help. 
Just remember to keep playing with it if you don't like where it's at. Just mess around with it. Maybe go a shorter instant center, not as long, et cetera, et cetera. You just got to play with it. Like I said, every car is gonna be different. I hope this wasn't too confusing for you guys. I know it's gonna be quite a bit of detail in one video. Go back and rewatch it. If you have any questions, feel free to message me on Instagram. So I'm really good at responding back on Instagram. If you have any questions about it, let me know. It should be very simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Just follow along and just think about making those bolt holes into points. That's all you're doing, just X and Y points. Really wanted to make this video because I imagine it's going to help quite a bit of people. And if you guys have any questions, just try and look online. Tim McCamus has a bunch of videos on four link stuff, but he doesn't really talk about calculating out where the bars actually land. And it's really is, it's, it's kind of complex and long, but they're all very simple steps. So don't be afraid of it. Like I said, message me on Instagram if you guys have any questions, at Meticulous. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, do the damn thing. And until next time, guys, we'll see you in the next one.